So my mom loved whipping these out whenever people came over to visit. Again, in India, growing up, there wasn't a lot of forewarning when people showed up. People would sometimes literally just show up. And what amazed me about her was how quickly she could scrounge through the fridge and whip out cutlets. Delicious, crispy, crunchy. Let me tell you, it is fantastic. Hi everybody, I'm Marijuana Rani, chef at Chai Pani in Asheville, North Carolina here in the South, and also the founder of Spice Walla. And I'm here today to make a really traditional Parsi dish that reminds me of my childhood. The Parsi name is Kairano Cutlets, and it basically means banana cutlets. And if you like this, subscribe, and you can see me do Kima Pao and Chicken Facha, Parsi Fried Chicken. So if you're wondering what cutlets are, think potato croquette. It literally is the perfect vehicle for leftovers in the fridge. It's a very British thing that the Parsis adopted. For those of you that may not be familiar with my background, I'm a Parsi. It's a very small, very unique group, almost a tribe now, of people that immigrated from Persia, oh God, about a thousand years ago. What we're brilliantly known for, in fact, legendary for it, is our food which Parsis have become just really good at is adapting, and I'm no different. Here in the U.S., I bought my Parsi sensibility, my Indian sensibility, and now I live in the South, and I've mixed them all together to create my own cuisine, and you'll see some of that in the dishes I'm gonna to do today. Try to find the greenest bananas you can because we don't want this to be a sweet dish. We want it to be a savory dish. We boil this in a pot of water, just like you're boiling potatoes, with a pinch of salt and a pinch of turmeric. And then it's super easy to peel, and the inside is just nice and mushy. And there's a slight nuttiness that the uh, food inside gets when you boil it with the skin on. And you want about an equal amount of the banana and the potatoes, give or take. So I'm gonna use a little potato masher. We just want to lightly crumble just to get it started. So I'm gonna put these guys in there. And now let's add our other ingredients. Onion, I prefer white for this dish because they're not quite as spicy as the red onions, but if all you have is red, that's fine too. Uh, really finely diced garlic. Now, ginger, and we want the ginger to be grated because if you just cut small diced pieces of ginger, it'll still be a little fibrous when you bite down on them. I don't mind it, some people do, but let's grate ginger. Love fresh ginger. So when cutting cilantro or herbs of any type, if you don't want them to bruise, which is what you don't want, straighten them up, roll them up like a cigar. You can do one bed if you want to, and then just do a very fine chiffonade. Don't cross cut back and forth and back and forth because if you do that, the cilantro is going to turn black and not look good and also actually not taste good. A tablespoon of cumin, camera, camera, and we're just going to toast this in a pan. And all you're doing is waiting for it to darken a little bit and you can smell the cumin, you'll smell the spice. Why do we toast spices? Well, it activates the oil inside the spices, releases them, and essentially that's what gives food flavor. If you were cooking like a curry or something, you'd then toast these in oil. And then that oil is part of the dish and then brings flavor to the dish. So never, ever, ever just throw cumin powder into liquid. You're missing out on 90% of the flavor. Second, pro tip. Do not borrow your wife's coffee grinder to grind spices. <laughs> So since I did accidentally use my wife's coffee grinder, oh, many, many, many moons ago, I now keep it as my spice grinder. In they go, and give it a whirl. I don't know about folks that go crazy over freshly roasted and ground coffee. I go crazy over freshly roasted and ground spices. I mean, it to me is just already transporting me to another place. And the last thing I wanna put in this is a green chili. And the nice thing about chilies is not just about eat, it's also about flavor. There's hundreds of varieties of chilies all in the world, and they each have distinctive flavors. Some are fruitier, some are spicier. This is just a serrano. You can use a bird's eye chili or serrano. Just roll the green chili on the cutting board like that, and you're loosening up the seeds in the inside. And then when you cut the end off, see, all the seeds just come popping right out. Sharp knife, cut lengthwise, and then cut lengthwise again, and give it a little mince. There you have it. A healthy pinch of salt. This is a really hard dish to season after it's done. It's a fried product. Don't be afraid to taste raw products because you can still make sure that you've got the right balance of acidity or sweetness or seasoning, salt. And I'll put a little bit of black pepper in here. Why? I like black pepper. It's my recipe, damn it. I'm putting it in there. So everything's in the bowl and now we mash. So don't overwork it. Just make sure your bananas are smushed first and then mix it all together. 
See, it's got a nice sort of clumpy texture. It forms together, doesn't need egg, does not need a binder, doesn't need flour in it, anything. The potato is creating the binding so it'll stick together. So let's shape these guys up. I'm gonna go probably golf ball size-ish, ish. My mom had a way of shaping them triangular, which I feel is like the traditional shape of a parsley cutlet. So we're gonna try to do that. Hey mom, what do you think? Not too bad, huh? Good pots, good words, and good deeds. Those are the three major principles of the Parsi religion. And we believe you cannot have good pots, good words, and good deeds without good food. Okay, my pan's hot. I'm using grapeseed oil. And you want to put about ooh, a quarter inch of oil. Remember, everything's cooked. So all we're trying to do is get a little crispiness on the outside. So I've warmed this up on a medium high flame, not a maximum. You, you don't want the oil sizzling right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and panko this directly. We don't need to egg and flour it because the panko will stick to the potatoes. And let's see if the oil's hot enough. Let's put a little piece of panko there and see if it starts to sizzle. See the panko starting to sizzle in there? That means the oil's getting hot enough. The last thing you wanna do is put anything like this in a pan where the oil isn't hot enough. The oil's just gonna soak in and make the whole thing greasy. All right guys, here we go. Hear that gentle sizzle? That's what we're going for. That's what they call me in the kitchen, gentle sizzle. <laughs> this is my famous double spatula technique. Well, to make sure you don't, you don't splatter yourself with oil when you do it, when you do the flip. Now, parsley cutlets are getting close to completion. They smell incredible. The ginger, the garlic, and the chilies are activated inside the oil, and you can actually smell the fragrance of them coming through. You got a beautiful little crisp on the outside. These are gonna be so, so, so good. Oh yeah. Both sides are done. It's a work of art. Boom, four patties, done. Let's dive into this sucker. This looks amazing. Here's my jam, by the way, when it comes to ketchup. Maggi ketchup. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's all over India. It's the only ketchup we eat in India. It's what I grew up with, but it makes a dish. If you can't find yourself Maggi ketchup, Go ahead and take, you know, regular ketchup and add a squeeze or two of something hot like sriracha. Blend it together and just a pinch of sugar because you want that sweet heat and that's what makes Maggie ketchup, ketchup delicious. As you can see, I've got a little kachumba on the side. That's like a little Parsi style salad. The Persians call it Salad Shirazi. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my God. <laughs> that's ridiculous. So, this is incredible. What's amazing about it, how light, how delicate it is. It just pops in your mouth. It's not spicy because there's very little heat in this thing. This is beautiful. And that Maggi ketchup just adds the perfect finishing touch. I also think about parsley cuisine. So this dish is really, it's multicultural. It's not just an Indian dish. You make this, you try this, and it's basically just delicious food. Mm. Make this one at home. I want to know how you're gonna make this dish. How you're gonna make your own parsley cutlets. Tell us in the comments below how you did it how it turned out for you. And if you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and see me to make two more Parsi dishes. Kima Pao and Chicken Fatcha, Parsi Fried Chicken. I'm doing the hits, man. Come check it out.